Good evening. We have another great lecture we're going to give you, a teaching, and we want you to enjoy this. This is very important. This one, you don't heard of this particular chapter, and I want to show you this chapter, these chapters in Deuteronomy 28, 29, and 30, you must read and understand. Don't just read this stuff and take it for face value now because we have too many people on the internet that taking this for face value and they're looking at the history that, go, that you can apply to our life with it and they're missing the hidden part that's underneath it all. This is an esoteric writing. This Bible that we have is a book of esoteric writing. You got mythology, you got myth, etc. in there, but always remember Myths are written, are written for you to understand that there's some truthism within it. And you have to pick out the truthism within it so you know what's going on. I say over and over again, at the time that the King James Bible was written, those individuals understood alchemy. We need to know that because it's very important. They didn't go around literally reading anything and, and saying that's how it was. When they wrote it, they didn't literally just write this stuff out. This book is a, a, a is a copy is a, a, a copy of a copy of the original. So what it is, these things had to be translated several times. So and when they translate stuff, sometimes things lose the volume of it. It don't always gain. It sometimes it loses the volume of it. And also remember that this book was written in around 1611 during the time of slavery. So you got the initiates and the individuals who actually compiled the new writing got themselves inside some of these scriptures. That's why it takes someone that is, is chosen. See, it say many are called, but few are chosen. You have to be chosen at this particular time of, of human history to translate this book correctly. I'm pretty good. I think I'm pretty good at it. Well, no. I cover some things that people never seen before because I have a spiritual guide. A lot of people don't like the idea that you say you have a spiritual guide. Many don't understand that. Moses had a spiritual guide. If you read the story of Moses, you see that a spiritual being from between the fifth and tenth dimension came into him and talked to him. You had uh, a Jacob had a spiritual guide that come to him. Jesus took the priesthood after Machazah, and you find out that Jesus at the Mount Figuration, Jesus had Elijah and one of the other prophets coming visiting him. See, these individuals have spiritual guides, but you don't know that because you haven't been taught that, and some individuals don't read the Bible enough to understand that. Sometimes when you hear me talking, I talk in a way that most people who've been into this book for 20 years and stuff like that and who really know this book, study this book, don't watch football games all the time, basketball games, but they spend some time in this book, them individuals are going to sometimes comprehend more what I'm saying than individuals who just got into the book, uh, heard things that grandma said and uncle said about the book. And so when I come to you using the scripture with certain new revelations, you may not accept it because you've been brought up on a, a traditional teaching. And it's not taken from you, it's just that it's a renaissance. 2000 brought on a spiritual renaissance. And we have to understand that the Bible talk about that renaissance. You're not gonna see the word renaissance in the Bible, but you're gonna see where he say unto, unto Daniel, he says, shed the word, seal the book, even to the end of time, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. What happened? to make that happen. If we look at history, we'll see that when they came and, and invented the cylinder engine in the printing press, that, that means more books were printed, faster, and et cetera, and you had a, 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 a what they call a renaissance at that time that took place. And then what you had, not only he said, many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. Look at it. For, uh, for about 5,000 more years, they was using the horse and buggy. Look at what had happened within the last hundred years or so in transportation and communication. Look at communication. Think about it. someone come up in our time that's about 150 years ago and they look at us and say, well, what? They'll look at that and hear the TV on that thing. People's in your living room. 
And that would be in 100 and some years. Come on. We got to understand that the scripture tells you about it. In Daniel, it tells you about it. In the 12th chapter of Daniel, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased at the ending of time. We are in the ending of time right now. We need to understand that. Now, I'm going to this time, I just got a loud mouth, okay? But I'm going to try to not yell and holler and all that stuff. I'm going to try to break it down because this is the time I need your attention. I really need your attention because it's some things and the way that they've been teaching these three chapters in Deuteronomy 28, 29, and 30. It's, it's a lot misleading when they talk about God. They make God seem like someone that want to beat you up all the time, want to knock you out all the time, want to curse you all the time, and all this other nonsense. God ain't like that. And we got to always remember with these books now, that's why you need a translator. With these books, God didn't write this book. Man wrote this book by the inspiration of God. We must never lose sight on that. Then that's why we can look in and separate what man is trying to say and what God is saying. Always remember that. The initiates wrote these books, and we need to understand these things because it's extremely important for us to know. You need your old-fashioned King James Version, not no living word, revive, and all that. They don't have so much stuff out of the Bible. I don't even like to look at them. I really don't. And you need an old-fashioned King James Version, one that you could go in and see, thus say the Lord, the way thus say the Lord, et cetera, et cetera. And these things are important. Now, before I get into this, I want you to always remind you, because we need this. We need you to read. You know, I heard someone say something that kind of pissed me off, because, you know, they say it, and it was like, Around a white environment, you know. I was like, uh, 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 I love my white folks. I like my black folks, and I like my black folks, and I want my black folks to come up. Okay, they always say we, as a people, as a whole, just put something, and if you want to hide it from black folks, just put it in a book. <laughs> it's automatically here because they don't like to read. Now we know that that's a misnomer. You know that sometimes it's true, you know, and sometimes it ain't. Okay. So I'm hoping my audience is an audience that likes to read and, and, and at least pick up a book every now and then. Pick up a book, much as you can, and read things so you can broaden your mind. These are two books that I want my brothers and sisters and all of the audience, I want you to order these books. The one, Judgment of America, and the other one, Black Nostradamus, Prophecy of America Future. I'm going to get in this lecture in the first chapter of Judgment on America that is very important. Jesus, in the writing of Jesus, the initiate said that this is, in that first chapter, that what I'm talking about, they said in the Bible that this is a sign for us at this time. That sign has to be broken down, and this is what, it, what happened in this. The thing about Assyria and America, Jonah coming to America. And this is what the topic is going to be, Jonah coming to America. I'm going to break that down so you can see where Jonah fit a person at this particular time of human history. It's very important to know that. These stories that, that we see was things that these individuals seen way off, and they wrote it so you could hear it and understand it at this day and time. Also, order that book. In order to want Judgment of America, and this one, Black Nostradamus, Prophecy of America Future. It's very good to order this book because I have 120 plus, about 21 prophecies that you need to read them and understand them and see the ones that already came to pass. Plus, it got a chart like the other book got in it that show you the economy of America from 2000 to 2021. We had 2018, and that chart has showed the economy as 100% accurate from what it have showed about our economy. It is right now 100% accurate. 18 years of showing what our economy going to do. Also, in that same chart, it shows you what year you're going to have the bad natural disasters. And when you look at it, you're going to be shocked because when you look at it, you're going to see things like when the recession happened. You're going to see things like when Katrina came. You're going to see things like 
Harvey and all the other ones came, the uh, earthquake and hate and all that. It's going to show you those years that the thing's going to be good, bad, and grievously bad. And these are things you need to understand that is right here in these books for you to see. Now, this lecture is, is a topic that most people, you know, I kind of like, I'm going to be honest with you, okay? I'm going to be honest with the audience. I'm going to be honest with you. I put another word up here. I put another word up here. My wife told me, you need to take that off here. You need to take that off there. You ain't no racist. You ain't all that and that. You don't react like that. You trying to do your best. You need to take that off there. Okay. And put what you had in the beginning. Okay. Because when I do this, I normally give it the topic first. Then I go and put apply the scripture that I want to use with the with the subject. And this is, why was I called a Negro? 2018 to 2020. Why was I called a Negro? Sometimes we have to ask ourselves that as an African American, as a black person in America who family, generation have came through the transatlantic slave trade and of the original peoples of the United States of America. See, we got to understand how to see that because we always talk about Africa and in Deuteronomy uh, 28, 29, we see the journey of us from Egypt, not from Canaan, from Egypt, which Egyptians controlled that area of Canaan, what we call the Middle East, that was part of Egypt. But see, today, the apologetic and all the other Christians want you to think that it's different. No. The Middle East was Africa. I'm going to say it again. The Middle East was Africa. Check it out. Check the history of it out and you'll see that. See, we got a people that come and they twist it and they put certain things in it and they take the Bible and use it for their advantage. And I got to tell you this again. I'm always going to say this. This book right here, it could deliver you and it could enslave you. And when you read Deuteronomy 28 to 29, you best better understand that. Because it will make you think God turned against you. God has never turned against his people. Peoples have turned against God's people. Not God turned against his people. And God be warning you, warning us what we need to know. Always hold on to his hand because if you turn loose his hand of a people, that's when what they call the so-called curses will come. The curses are simply not working the knowledge of God to your advantage so you could get the blessings from God. See, we did not want to listen to the voice of the Lord. We did not want to obey his five commandments. And see, this is what's happening now. We've been told the laws of Moses are the commandments of Moses, the ten uh, commandments of Moses, and we think that's the law of God. That's not the law of God. That's only a part of it. Study and analyze the Ten Commandments. The first four is all about your relationship to God. Morals. The other six is your relationship to your brother man. Social. That's only two of the five commandments that's given by the voice of God. And they haven't told you that. So when you saying, I'm obeying the commandments of God, and you don't know what the commandments of God, then that curse that they talk about, that curse is in your life as a people because you're not following the voice of God, and you're not following the commandments of God. People, it's very important to understand what this book is really saying. See, what you're looking for, and that's why they, 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 they come on us like they do. See, we like to read stuff. When it comes to things we want to read, but we don't understand the content, the subtext, and, and stuff like that. We don't, we don't, we don't want to see that. We don't want to break it down and say, where did this come from? When did King James, James write this? And who all did he send this book to? Did he send it to the world? Or did he just send it to another part of his, his empire? Or he just sent it over here to the colonies of America? See, this book was only written for the colonies of America. That should tell you something. We need to wake up. 
We perish for lack of knowledge. And we need the knowledge of God in our hearts and our minds. So we can see this stuff. And the reason I'm going this way with this instead of going all over this way, I need to get you to pay attention now. You need to think. That's why the Egyptian used this term, thought. Thought was a God. Why was thought a God man known as Machazadeh? Because he is the closest one to your conscience to get you to think. See, you got a thought, and you need to learn how to think so you can understand this. And you can know what God wants to do with us at this particular time of human history, children of Israel. And I love it. You are the children of Israel. The children of Israel did not come on the scene until you came on the scene, but nobody told you that. See, you got to learn that. See, I know that, but you don't know that because it's a revelation. Most people think the children of Israel were back here 2,000 years ago and 3,000 years ago and four. No, they was not. No, they was not. And this is new to you. It's like, whoa, where are you coming from? The children of Israel cannot come until the messenger come for our day and time. And Israel is the code name to the messenger. So you have to be the children of the messenger to be the children of Israel. The story of Jacob and the story of Israel is a mythology for the future. And you got to see that, my people. I love you. And I know God loves you. I know that God loves you. Because the more he showed me the revelations, the more he revealed this stuff. He let me know at this time, a chosen people is on the planet. You may not feel chosen, but you are chosen. And there won't be many years from now that you're going to know how chosen you are. See, to my white audience, this out there, along with my black audience. See, the children of Israel is, must understand that you come over in different ways, but yet the reason why you have to show that journey from Africa, which come out of Egypt, from Egypt, to the Israel area, to the northern and western coasts of Africa, what they call Negro land, it, they show you that because they're trying to tell you a bloodline from Egypt had to come. And that's what's going on. A bloodline from Egypt had to come. They show you the journey of Abraham or the bloodline that's coming here. And with that bloodline, some peoples came. But yet, he, God had to bring that bloodline from the east to the west. So he said in the writing of Jesus, as the lightning shineth from the east even to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. See, the bloodline had to come, and that's why you'll see that journey from Africa to America to show you the bloodline. But don't get it all twisted. It was some of the ones that had came here long ago lived in America, we call the American Indian. Now you need to understand that. See, we looking at it and think that just the African was the ones enslaved. No, they enslaved all our people, the ones that was here and the ones they brought over. And we got to see this. And you're dealing with affliction that God been to cut the umbilical cord of that affliction and bless you. And he have to bless you through the same one that blessed Abraham, he got to bless you with that same one that blessed Jacob, and he got to bless you with the same one that Malachi, in the book of Malachi, is saying that to bless you today. You got to be blessed by that Machedic priesthood. See, Machedic in the Egyptian knowledge is known as thought. But from the Hebrew and from the scripture, we call him Machedic. So if somebody hear me use the term that I have a spiritual guide, and I use the term thought, or I use the term Machedic, I use the term Hermes, they'll 
go back and read about Hermes, and they can see some negative writing of Hermes because you got to remember, them people ain't want you to know and tie you, want you to tie yourself back to ancient Egypt, the thought. So they're going to tell you how it fit in. So you're going to read something, and you may hear something negative about Hermes. You may get good and bad, but you got to remember every one of your masons, every one of your eastern stars, every one of your shrines, every one of your rose Christians, all of them who running your nation draw from the energy of Hermes, the Hermetic uh, principles, as above, so below. See, they know something that you don't know, and that's why they the boss, and you the followers. But see, God wants them bosses to get in line because them bosses haven't told you the truth. So God wants you to start understanding the truth so God could be able to bless you. See, sometimes people be so selfish that running the system and running things that they say, well, they, they ain't ready for the truth. Uh, I, I don't think I'm going to give them that. They, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what to do with it. You know? And they just write you off. But see, God is ready for you to have the truth. So he sent you a messenger. So you have to understand, why was I called a Negro? See, when you see yourself and God show you way part of your past and your ancestors' past and you see yourself right now, you know that this time had to be so you could come among your people as your peoples are, and you could open their eyes to God. See, if someone said, I was, I was in slavery, because my ancestors were in slavery. You wasn't in slavery, black man and woman of the day. You was in the affliction. Our great, great ancestors from the flesh was in slavery. Always understand that. We are spiritual beings that come to this planet to live a physical experience. When you came to this planet, you came in the affliction, not the slavery. Your ancestors came in the slavery and the affliction, but you came only in the affliction. The Jim Crowism and all these unwritten laws that still govern you. And we got to see that. Now, the fathers of ancient Egypt. Now, we are spiritual beings, and we got to see that. So where are we coming from when we say the fathers of ancient Egypt? God said, or uh, Jesus said, Jesus said that we, the Son of Man, will come in his fathers and the holy angels. And that means we got to understand the fathers, the knowledge of the fathers, so we can know what we need to do. Because the 400 years of affliction end in 2018, 2020, in that period. And you always will see on this board, you'll see 2018 to 2020. It's a very important time we're living in right now. You haven't seen much in 2018, but I guarantee you, 19 and 20, you're going to see something. You're going to see some shaking, bold, moving, and all this other stuff in them years. If you read the chart in the book, in this book and one in this book, you'll see on that chart, 2018 is a good year, 2019 is a bad year, and 2020 is a grievously bad year. That's why I'm trying to tell you, get the books for your own good. Take your time to sit down. Read and study. Read and study these writings. It's important. And individual asked me, say, well, how, you know, after I talk about it, they said, how could I get this book? Very simple. Very simple. You go on Amazon, you go Barnes and Noble, you go Author House, and many others. It's right on the internet. All you got to do is click your phone and say, Judgment of America by Louis Jerome Armstrong. It will give you direction how to order this book. Go to this one. Black Nostradamus, Prophecy of America Future by Louis Jerome Armstrong. It will pull it up. These books are on the internet. Just like you see them right here. 
you're gonna, when you pop them up on the internet, you're gonna see them like living color, just like you see them right here. So you're gonna see these books, and very simple to get. You can order them right on your telephone. I could take my phone and flip it. I Me, mean, not flip it, I ain't got the flip one, okay? I can take my phone and hold it up and talk to it. And when I talk to my phone and just say, uh, Black Nostradamus Prophecy of American Future by Louis Armstrong, bam, there you go. Judgment of America by Louis Jerome Armstrong, there you go. You can do it. It's just that simple. Now, now we're going to get into this because we are dealing with 400 years of affliction in 2019 and 2020. Why was I called, why was I called a Negro? Okay. Now, black folks got to understand that the Negro didn't come here like some people try to portray them. A lot of the Negroes was what some would call today Israelites, okay? They're called today Israelites. That ain't the term I use because of the way I teach, but I'm going to just use that because that's what they do, okay? And we'll just go from that way. And they know that those people were good in the trades, those people was good in the writing, those people. In other words, if you want a, a slave, you want a, a slave that, an educated, hardworking slave, okay? You didn't want nobody that, that couldn't eat out of a can or eat out of a bowl and all that nonsense, how they portray it. You wanted one that could build a barn, you could want one that could build a house, you wanted one that could build a city, you wanted one could write and know how many animals that the that the uh, master had and tell how much, how fat they need to be, how lean they need to be, what they, what corn you need to plant, what rice and beans you need to plant, and different things. See, that's the type of slave that came over here, bumped that crap you're talking about on television, okay? That, that ain't how these people was. They went and got them from a certain area. They didn't just get no anybody. You see them with Hollywood, they show with the thing, especially on that movie they had with the sword and all this nonsense and all this craziness. Yeah, you got that part over there, but them ones that came over here, no. And they brought over here, you got to remember, when you got on the boat, they gave you them ragged clothes to put on. They have you, some of your clothes so good, they had kept them for themselves. They gave you more ragged clothes to put on, and when you see them on the slave, uh, 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 on the, on the slave thing, standing up there on the platform and trading you, that's what they gave you to put on. That ain't what our people had on. That's what they gave you to put on. And see, we got to see these things. Quit letting people try to show you all these lies about yourself and all this nonsense about yourself and read Deuteronomy 28 to 30 and tell you that's how he was. You know, God was destroying you. God was, was going to just take you apart and just just do you any kind of way. That's a lie. Man did all that stuff to you. That slave master put some of that stuff in there to make you think that's how it was. You didn't go like that. You wasn't all about that nonsense. They tried to make you less than what you was. And when they took your language, they took your culture, you took your identity away from you, when they took all that, they made a nigga. And that's what they produce. What they call a nigga. They call you a nigga. You didn't call yourself that. You was a person who was trapped in a condition. And you came at that time, you had done came from Negro land, but before you went to Negro land, you come from ancient Egypt. And we have to see these things to know how to understand this. So I don't want, I'm trying all I can to kind of keep this low key. Because it's very important. Now, let's read some of this. In Deuteronomy 28, 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shall hearken diligently, and I understand this word, diligently, unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now, I'll keep going over this again and again. The voice. The voice of the Lord thy God. Remember in the scripture where you first hear the voice of the Lord thy God. God bless man, morals. And he said, be fruitful, economic, multiply, sociology, subdue and build, political, then the diet and appetite, five laws. God altered five laws to mankind to follow. We have to follow those five laws. The ten laws 
of Moses is in the social and the moral. These other three is left alone and we're not understanding it. And I always say, people like the NAACP, the SCLC, read about these people very carefully, these Jewish individuals. The Jews never wanted you to understand the economics. See, the NAACP never was there to build corporations and help you build corporations for yourself. That's where the true wealth come from. See, money is a minute matter. Wealth come from the corporation and the businesses. See, you can build an army with industry. You can't build an army with just paper money. And you got to understand that. We got to understand these things. You can build a life for yourself and for your family and other people with industry. Some of you have worked and lived in industry and worked in industry all of your life. And every, every Friday, every Wednesday, you get your paycheck. And when you get your paycheck, you take the money and you pay your bills, etc. If you have enough, you put some for the kids to go to college and all this. And when they get out of college, you smile because you took the money and you put it back and you save it. And you transform your kid's life and etc. Industry is wealth. And we have to understand these things. Yes, industry can build and make money. You ever seen people trying to swap uh, money for industry? People who understand that? No, no, no. They want their industry. And you, you, you know, your money, you got to give them what they really, really want so they can buy another industry if they're not trying to retire. But they're not too much concerned about just your money. That's why I say they'll get people like Oprah, Michael Jordan, some of the other, they get plenty of money. But Ophir, thank you. I don't want to make no mistake on this. Ophir is in Chicago, too, a from Chicago area. And Chicago have more crime than anything else, you know, and some of the other from these places. And, and, and well, what, what your money doing for our people? Are you building the industry necessary to build our people? So are you building an industry or a situation just for yourself and your pleasures? We got no responsibility, and I never want to beat up on Oprah. I really don't. If you think that, and if Oprah ever hears this, or somebody tell her, I'm sorry. I'm calling it like it is. Because the love that I have for our people, and the love that I think the other ones of us should have for our people. If we don't change it, it cannot be changed. See, God has put us, the children of Israel, at the forefront now. But they got to know that they're at the forefront. See, the stage curtain that came open, and they don't even know that they're supposed to be performing. Supposed to be there, enlightening the masses of their peoples and enlighten the masses of others with the ideals in which God wants mankind to have at this time. It's very important. And we need to see that. Now let's steal back. Let's go back to this thing. You got to hear the voice of the Lord, thy God. To observe, observe, understand this word. To observe, not, is it say to read or to just hear? No, to observe. It's a science to this. To observe and to do all his commandments, which I command, look, which I command thee. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is very, see, it says observe. It's telling you the word observe. Now watch what it says. I want you to hear this. The voice of the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God, <coughs> to observe and to do all his commandments. Now you hear another person talking. His commandments. To do all his commandments, which I, wait, this is another person. His commandments, which I, Command thee this day. Thought the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Now you are hearing something that's asking you to observe. You need to know how God is using this. To spark 
your penal gland, that that Holy Spirit that's in you could awaken to God using the fathers to talk to you. God is using the initiates to open your eyes to see how your blessings going to come because thought is maternity and every time you see a person that God have appointed in the front of your fathers is always thought who is majestic. See, God want to bless you, but it's an order to it. And he's trying to show you this order. See, majestic is known as the priest of the most high God. That's God Almighty. Majestic and thought is the same person. So when they use thought in the Bible, all oh, they tell you about Machazzi, but they changed the name into Machazzi into thought. Oh, wait. See, thought was in the beginning. You see, thought, you didn't hear Machazzi until later. But then they had start putting thought and Machazzi all in there. Abraham, you see, uh, in Abraham, you see uh, thought. Then you see later Machazzi. At Moses' time, yeah. In different times, you see, in Jesus' time, they talk about the priesthood. But I don't want to get into that right now. I want you to see this because they put thought, that there, and that's thought. Thought the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Why? The Egyptian want you to see thought. Why? Thought, a thought of myth, or was he a real person? See, at times you're gonna see them use things and objects. You see a man with a bird head when it comes to thought. When you see people's like almond, you see almond like he is a man with his. I think he, one of them has a green thing, or, or Osiris, and all that. But you're going to see them kind of like make them a little bit different for reasons. And you begin to understand thought, thought. Why would you use thought? See, to get to God and to get, keep elevating yourself, you got to use your conscience with thought. You got to think about what God is trying to do with you. Because are you going to see me use this term? Unity is love, love is unity. As above, so below. Thought. You're going to see that that comes from thought or Hermes. As above, so below. What God wants you to understand, the intelligence of thought, the intelligence that he has incorporated and built inside your mind. And you have to be able to use the thought to resurrect it. That's why you see in the story of Joseph, if you follow one of my earlier lectures, in the story of Joseph, you're going to see Joseph, when his name returned to Israel, how he met and asked that person, what was his name? And he said, my name is Thought. See, Thought is a is the priest of the most high God. He don't die. Thought is here to give you the knowledge of the God Almighty. He's the priest of the most high God. He is known in Egyptian mythology as a God man. One that God has placed here to help guide man in his journey toward the Almighty. These are things we got to understand. You're not being taught this in the church. This is a new age and a new time. You need to see this because if you don't observe, you're not going to pick it up. You're going to go and say, uh, 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 this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high. You know, you're going to read it like that. See, God has made me a master in this stuff. I told you earlier, I'm one of the chief architects. I have a spiritual God constantly giving me revelations. 
in this Bible. When my spiritual guide came to me, Melchizedek, who some know it thought, he came to me with this book. With this book. He came to me from a higher dimension, and when I seen him coming, he was in that dimension, you walk right through the walls. There ain't no wall there. Okay. And I seen the myth that was around him, this energy of myth around him, and he came as two. That's why I know he was a brother. He was he was a, a human, been a human like us. Because when you see him, if you study Egyptian mythology, you see him, they always made him two. One with the clay, one with the spirit. Okay. One is spirit, one is a, 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 a human. Okay. Natural. Like a physical. One physical, one spiritual. He came with a twin. So I recognized that he was a brother who had been in the past, one of the fathers, that was a priest. And when he came, because he had priestly attires, and he looked up, and when he looked that way, I seen something immediately appeared in his hand. And it was a Bible thicker than this that let me know that the Bible, original Bible, have more than what we have in it. It was thicker than this, and if you put the apocryphy and some of the other things, you are automatically, some of the books that I took out, it automatically going to be thicker than this. Okay, it was thicker, and when he came to me, I'll never forget it. When he came to me, he came to me, and I never, I never, I could see his face way off. But when he came to me, my mind was so fixated on the book, and him turning the book, it was like, it was like, whoa, just like that. You know, read it. And I, I looked at him on the high side. I never forget it. It, it, it. When he turned, next thing I know, I was right in front of him, and I seen him turning the pages of the book. I said, damn, this man is a genius. And he talked to me telepathically and said, I want you to be just like us. And that's how I got my calling into the Melchizedek priesthood which is the priesthood of thought, which is part of the Coptic Egyptian priesthood. That's why I have a right to translate the book. And some of you, you know, y'all may not understand this stuff because you got a book with, with a lot of things not quite right in it. 20 years ago or so, they told you. PTL, 700 Club, and all the other, they told you. But you didn't listen to them. They told you the book is in codes. They done told you that. But most people keep on literally trying to read and try to understand and think they know it. And they teach it literally just like it is. The book is in codes, people. It's in code. The white man tried to tell you long ago the book is in codes. It's a coded book. You need to understand how it's translated. And that's very important. Now, Thought is the Lord thy God. Okay? Now, there's the Lord thy God and there's God Almighty. There's God Almighty. Thought is a priest and a king under God Almighty. He's not God Almighty. He's a brother. Like, done, done rose up to be a God man. And that's why Jesus took the priesthood because you're seeing Jesus being a God man. Jesus is not, and I say this, Jesus was not God Almighty. In spite of what Constantine and other people tried to make it be, and the white church tried to make it be, and now the black church emulate the white church to try to make it be, and they look at Jesus as God Almighty. No, no, it ain't happening like that. If Jesus was God Almighty, why he took the Melchizedek priesthood? Why he didn't come with his own priesthood? You ever thought about that? He's asking you to think. Thought is asking you to think. Think about what is being said. Jesus never said that he was God Almighty. Man said that Jesus was God Almighty to get you to worship them and follow them because they said Peter gave the church the authority, or they got the authority from Peter, and that's where all this stuff came from, Frank from. So they lied to you, just like they have slipped some lies in Deuteronomy uh, 28, 29, and 30. And said, God was gonna do this, God gonna curse you, God gonna do, God ain't never said he's gonna do all that crap. 
That man said that. And then I tampered with this book. And you need to be able to translate it so you can understand what's really happening. Because he afflicts you. God ain't caused these afflictions to come upon you. You caused certain things to come, but this thing was written. That certain things are going to happen. And if you begin to learn God's law, then he can't afflict you no more. So what God really sees in a time when you done walk away from really understanding his laws. And don't get me wrong, you walked away before the white man enslaved you. Because what you got to see is that in that, God seen our shortcomings. And how we need to get out of that condition. And it's telling you the laws of God. All that stuff is telling you about the laws of God. Even when it's saying they're going to come in ships, it's saying that, hey, look, you got to go back to the laws of God. Even if they say they're going to have iron and all this nonsense around your neck, you got to go back and listen to the voice of the laws of God, of, of God, the commandments of God. That's all it's trying to tell you. But they make it seem like all this happened to you and that, hey, this happened to a segment of you, and this definitely happened to the seed of Abraham that was the royals. But it ain't happened to all of, of, of the Hebrew people, the Hebrew children, or the children from, from Negro land. It happened to all of them because some of them didn't come on the boat. Some of them was already here. And if you read the Romeric, you don't even know that the ones that already here was included in the prophecies. Because they didn't make it plain. They did not want you to know certain truths. So they was not incorporated in there. And you need to see that. Now let's deal with this. The philosopher's stone. Alchemy. And what is this all about? To find the universal elixir. Now, elixir, the magical, the magical of Medivh, Mac, Mac, Maci, Cinder, Potion. And you'll see an elixir guaranteed to Induce, induce love. Now, what I'm saying, what I'm trying to show you here is that the ones who compiled this book deal with the philosopher's stone or alchemy. Alchemy is a, a science, a knowledge that comes from uh, Egypt, and that's why I took the name alchemy. Kemet. It comes from Kemet. This knowledge comes from the Fathers of ancient Egypt. And you need to understand this because in it, the writings was written in a, in a form of alchemy. That's why they're written like it is, that you can understand what this is trying to say to you. How you translate this stuff so it can tell you how you need to make that magical formula in your mind through thought, through thought in order to liberate you into the person you need to be. First, you got to be liberated inside before you can be liberated outside. And you got to understand that. This is things that you haven't been told to that love and you need to pick up on it. And now, and these things is, is very important. I want to get over here and see, it's good over here? Okay. Now, in Deuteronomy 28, 10, and all the peoples of the earth, now understand when they use this word earth, it's not the way we use earth, neither when you see the term meat, it's not the way we use the term meat. Meat mean diet, meat do no, and meat can mean uh, the good things you bring into your life as well. So when you see the word earth, it's just like seeing the word in uh, sea in certain prophecies. Sea is going to represent Europe. Earth is going to represent the United States, this new land that we're in. That's when you see that. Most people take the word earth and they think, oh, the whole globe. No, this is not talking about the whole globe. Okay, like I said, this book was to come to America. Okay, and it came to America. And all peoples of the earth shall see thought. Now, now I put a comma there because you need it there. To see, now they're going to see that. They're going to see, all people of the earth shall see that. Thou art called by the name of the Lord. Okay, they're going to see that and read that. But what it's saying, all, and all people of earth, 
of America, of the United States, shall see thought. Why should they see thought? Why should they see thought? They're going to see thought because of a reason. Thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Why are they going to be afraid of thee? Because there's power here. The blessings are here. See, they ain't telling you that thought was one that you're supposed to look up to. Thought is one that you're supposed to talk to your God through. See, they never tell you that. And when you start seeing the miracles that work for you by you obeying the voice of the Lord, thy God, to reach the God Almighty, whoa, they're going to see changes in your life. They're going to see where you're going to start taking over things. See, you don't know that it's you, children of Israel, that listen to me now. See, the children of Israel did not come back 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago. The children of Israel are here now. See, that's why you see me bringing the arts to you. I try to bring the arts to you to help wake you up, to help wake your kundalini up, to help wake your Holy Spirit up. See, the arts are necessary because back in the day in ancient Egypt, the arts was there. Understand when Moses throws the rod out, then Pharaoh throws the rod out, the arts was there. See, most people think, well, Moses was a Hebrew and Pharaoh was, a, uh, was an Egyptian. No, Moses was what Pharaoh was. The same thing. Moses was a prince. The only difference between Moses and Pharaoh, Pharaoh had the power and he controlled the political scheme of things. Moses had. He was like a preacher that's supposed to be a political leader similar to like Martin Luther King was. But this is a whole different set. And Moses was to start the children of Israel on their journey toward their promised land, like Martin Luther King was. He was to start you on your journey to your promised land. But then Joshua was to come on the scene. And then David was to come on the scene. And then Solomon. And see, we have to understand this thing. Because as we begin to understand this thing, we know that the children of Israel is talking about the people now, and they got something to do, because God want to bless them. Deuteronomy 28, 12. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasures. I want you to hear this now. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasures. Now, how do this happen? You got to understand. Now, how do the Lord open the good treasures? See, Machazadeh cannot do anything without the power of his God. Because Machazadeh is our brother. Just like Jesus was our brother. See, Machazadeh walked the earth. Jesus took the priesthood after Melchizedek and he walked the earth. Melchizedek was a resurrected being. Jesus was a resurrected being. See, we got to see this, but he still was a, a man God. Both of them was men gods. See, they don't teach you about the men gods. You got to learn about from the fathers of ancient Egypt. You got to learn about them in that environment. See, Christianity has so done distorted stuff so bad that you think you're doing right when you're doing wrong. And when somebody like me come and tell you, brother, you, 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 you got it wrong, you will sit there and call me all kinds of names. You'll sit there and don't like it, just like them little bad behind children do. When uh, you give them something they don't want to do right, ah, and then you, yeah. Uh, see, let's don't be bad children. Let's do the right thing, listen, and be able to move ourselves forward because we are the fathers and the mothers of the future. We are the ones that are going to, the whole earth, the whole America is going to see God through thought in our lives. See, when you start calling, talk about thought, you're going to shock them. Because especially the ones in power, 
because they know that you can reach to a high level of power when that happens. So you think they don't know this stuff, some of this stuff, and know that it's supposed to happen? You hear many people, and I remember when I was part of the LDS, they, they claimed to have the metallic priesthood by Moroni, and one of the ones came in the spirit and stored the priesthood on Joe Smith, etc. Whether that true or not, I don't know. I'm not here bashing them that night. They, 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 that was real, it was real, it wasn't the way. The only problem I got is they still try to use that white Jesus and that I ain't with that, okay? Other than that, they're a pretty good organization when it comes to taking care of their people, okay? So I'm not here to bash them, okay? I just got a problem with that Eurocentric Jesus, that Constantine type Jesus, that Pope that brought his son type Jesus face. I got a problem with that. And see, that that's talked about in the Bible as the images and all that. But I ain't here to beat on them and stuff like that, okay? I'm just letting you know about them, okay? Now, okay, uh, what we see, because one day you're going to be able to transform even those individuals to a higher level of consciousness, okay? Because he told Ezekiel, son of man, take it to the wicked, the righteous as well, so the wicked. Why would he say that? Because some of our brothers and sisters in the Lord, some of our brothers and sisters that follow God, have been told something one way when it was all automatically another way. And we have to straighten the other brain of truth with them too. Okay. Now, in all churches, Baptist, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, and all the rest of them. Okay. And we got to understand that. Now, we got to see this. Because this is going to match up with something in Malachi. And most people don't know that. They don't see that. A Deuteronomy 28, 12 Say, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasures, the heavens to give treasures, the heavens to give the rain unto thy land in his season. Now understand that now. Because what we did, we was over here and it was telling you to observe. To observe. Now what is it saying to you? It sounds like something else. I'm going to read to you, and some of you can see that something else down here. You can read to yourself as well. But this seer sounds like something in Malachi that deals with the tithes and offerings. Is this the same thing? Yes, it is. And most people don't know that. That way, when God bless you, that means you're going to be a came out of the affliction. So if that's the same thing as this, Malachi cannot be fulfilled. Malachi 3.10 cannot be fulfilled until you come out of affliction. See, but most people don't catch up on this stuff. And they run and talk about God's going to pull me out of blessing. And the church folk and the preacher up there telling you pay your tithes and offering. God's going to pull you out of blessing. He's going to open the windows of heaven and all this other nonsense and give you this. That can't happen until that time come. And that time ain't until now. So how could the heck could you get something that's meant for it to be after the affliction? It's part of the tithes and offering that certain blessing he's talking about. He showed Abraham when he showed him about the great substance after the 400 years. Not only are you going to have great substance, but you're going to live long jeopardies. You're going to go to the fathers at a good old age. That means that your DNA, there's going to be a transformation going to happen in the way that the, the earth possession of the equinox are. You're going to be caught up in Aquarius, and the age of Aquarius is an age just like the age of Gemini. It was an air sign, three air sign, Libra, Gemini, and Aquarius. So Moses still mean if, if Noah them lived 900 some years then, that means you got to go back to living 900 some years. But they're not telling you this, and you don't know this because you're not looking at it as an alchemist. See, the alchemist who wrote the book knew this. But you've been learning. You just separate your science, botany, from, uh, from uh, uh, all the other. You don't separate this science from that science and that science. Uh, astronomy from astrology. Uh, uh, oh, boy. Plant stuff and all this other stuff. You don't separate it. You don't separate it. It will all go together. All in one. But see, you don't want to read and study. Because they already have said black folks do not like to read. That is not to be with this group of black folks here. 
this group of black folks is always check me. Check what I say so you could know the truth is. Check it. Don't go by what your tradition doesn't told you and all this nonsense. Open minded. Become free thinkers. Check me by being a free thinker to see. That's the best way for you to get into the things you need to get into and the knowledge of God. You got to have thought to all this. That's why the Egyptian used the term thought. Thought is a universal principle. To give is a universal principle. But God showed you what direction you're going to need to give in order to weep that type of blessing. You just can't give to any kind of ministry and think you're going to get blessed by God? No, it don't work like that. Because they tell you in the beginning of, of Malachi, they tell you about the messenger. And it tells you about the storehouse. So he, you got to find who that messenger is. And you got to put it in the storehouse in which that messenger have built so you can weep the blessing. You can put it in the places that people say, Rev say, well, my storehouse is a storehouse. I don't believe what that, what that guy got to say or that so-called minister got to say. Mine is a thing. God going to bless you through my ministry. The hell he will. Hate to say it like that, but the hell he will. This is a revelation. We got to take revelation for face, for what it really is, a revelation for a certain time. You're not going to get that kind of blessing. And I don't care what they say. I told you I will not lie to you. When God gives me a revelation, I have a spiritual God, a thought, Machazadik, the God, man, of the most high God. So I ain't coming with you like anybody with that nonsense. I'm coming to you like Moses came to you. See, Moses had Machazadik. Machazel is the one was shown in the burning bush. Moses asked him, who, when I go to the children of Israel, who do I say you are? Who do I, who, 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 who do I tell them I'm talking to? And Machazel said, I am thought I am. And people go around and say, well, God said, I am that, that I am. No, I am thought that I am. Tell, it told him he was thought. That's the one that God sent to man. So man could get closer to the powers of the Almighty. See, you can't go over the captain and get to the general just because you want to jump to a higher place. And, and, and go to the general. The general gonna tell you he ain't gonna tell you nothing. His man is gonna tell you. His servant is gonna tell you. No, you got to go see Captain So and So, and talk to Captain So and So, cause they got to be rank and file. You got to follow the protocols. There are protocols in this book. You can't skip thought and go all to God Almighty. Jesus told you you pray unto the Father. In thy name. See, you got to ask God for what you want through thought. That's what you got to have. And the messenger that's coming now telling you that you got to have thought to reach the Almighty. That's the way it's signed up. That's the way the Bible telling you. You could get to the Almighty. You could get the blessing of the Almighty. But you got to keep in mind how you enter into the Almighty. It's like going to see the Queen. You just done walk all up in there. I come to see the Queen. You know, you just done walk on up there. Beat them guards at that gate. Then you got somebody to come there and talk to you and say, Do you have an invitation? Because they know you don't have one. Because they already know that the person who is looking for you already on guard to expect you to come in and already told the ones that's following protocols that you come. So you think you're just going to walk up to God Almighty with your prayers without someone being involved? No, no, no. He's ready to answer them, but you got to follow the protocols because you got to learn the knowledge of thought and whoa, that one there just hit me. I know some people, they ain't want to hear that one. Whoa, that's like drawing your scroll. 
You know. And don't get me wrong. God is there and he listens to everything. See, God is so smart, so wise, that he knows you're praying. See? Although God made a man God, but God know you're praying. But God won't say nothing. Because all the things is in godly order. See, he ain't gonna say nothing. It's like daddy seeing mama chastise you. See, daddy know a smart father gonna shut up. Let mama handle it. Let it be that way. Don't go and switch off on him. You think daddy don't see that? Sometimes daddy want to give you a hug, but daddy got to say, no, nah, I better leave this alone. Let that, that, that essay, uh, let whatever mama name is, you know, so let her handle it. And then when you come back and you talk to God, and he said, well, God, you know, uh, uh, mama Cheryl ain't quite do me right. Uh, uh, <laughs> God said, Dad say, well, what else on your mind? Because you don't want to deal with that one. Because that been done. It been following the protocol. So you want to deal with that. God the same way. See, you're going to go there and some of you are going to go and say, well, I'm going to get my blessing for God. Bump thought. Bump my child. I'm, I'm going to get my blessing for God. Okay, go ahead on. Try it. See, why are they going to be afraid of you? It's because you're going to do it the right way. Why are they going to be afraid of you? Because you're in the energy of the Almighty. You're not going through idolatry gods. These things that the Europeans are starting in motion. You're going directly to the mainstream. You're talking to God Almighty through the messengers. You're using the messengers. And they know when you're using them names, or you, you're going somewhere with this thing. Deuteronomy 28, 12. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasures, I mean, the heavens to give the rain unto thy land. Now, unto thy land. Now, notice what he said. Thy land. Have the children of Israel got their land yet? No. Because what this is, something of the future. This is a future. You ain't got no land now. That land over there, Israel, that the people trying to occupy. No, no, no. That ain't what that's about. You got to be in place. That's why I keep telling you, God wants you to have your territory. I keep telling you this over and over again. Why do you think I keep telling you this? Because I know this stuff I'm teaching you. That's why I'm telling you this. God want to bless you. The rain upon thy land in this season. That's why I say it in this season. And to, notice it, and to bless all the work of thy hands. And thy shall lend, whoa, look at here. Thy shall lend unto many, many nations. Wait a minute. I, I told y'all about the five laws of God. I've been hollering the five laws of God all the time. I've been telling you economics, fruitful, being fruitful, economics. That's one of the laws of God. That's one of the laws that the Ten Commandments don't show you. That is the law of God. That's from the voice of God. Wait a minute. Hey, look at him now. He's trying to tell you. He wants you to be lenders to nations. Notice that what he's saying. This is very important. Bless all the works of thy hand, and thy shall lend unto many nations. And I put it between their bankers. Whoa. What's that saying? See, the so-called Jews now trying to be the bankers, they're trying to steal your birthright because you don't know the laws of God. See, you walked away from the laws of God, and when they gave you the book, you never asked God what you need to understand in this book. You just start reading and they sent you to the seminars and your preacher is going to these schools and stuff like that. So white man could teach you what he wanted you to teach and know. He didn't want you to know these truth is No. He didn't want you to know that you was the children of Israel. He didn't want that. No, no, no. Then if you start seeing yourself as children of Israel, you start taking 28, 29, and 30 and seeing it the right way. Quit focusing on the curses. That's not what God want for you. That's not what he planned. That's not what he put in motion for you. The Eurocentric man put them things in motion for you. And you took it. And you ran with it. He hooked you. And you ran with it. And you, he made you feel like God was doing it. No, no, no. He ain't no God. The devil was doing it through him. And that's why it was written there. For you to see what he was going to do to you. Because God ain't do that to you. The devil, through him, did that to you. 
quit trying to say, and you brothers and sisters that opening this film verses up and telling these our brothers and sisters and beating on them, talking about God, we're going to put you in the ship. God was going to do this to you. God was going to do that to you. God is going to do all these things to you. God ain't going to do none of that stuff to you. The devil, through the Eurocentric man, pulled that stun on you. And you didn't have the knowledge of things, so you had to weather the storm. And that's basically what's going on. Now let's look at that. You're going to become bankers. Now, in that, in the five laws of God, one of them is economics. That means you got to be able to see anything talking about. It. You're going to lend. That means you're going to have the industry to lend. You're going to become bankers. Like Solomon, wealthy. Knowing the story about Solomon being one of the wealthiest people that is. There was Solomon. And David, but what you're trying to tell you, Solomon, all, you, all Solomon trying to do is tell you, point you to this time we're in now. That's what the story of myth of Solomon is, to point you to now. You're going to be the Solomons. You're going to have treasures. You're going to have wealth. You're going to be the one that lend it. See, this is how they're going to be afraid of you. What's going to start happening around you is going to make people fearful. They're going to see magical powers happening in a people's life and their life being turned around just within years and they ain't going to be able to understand that. What is this going on? They're going to hear you talking about thought and the God Almighty. The Lord God thought and the God Almighty. They're not used to hearing that. You, 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 you mean to tell me you, you forgot about Jesus? You say, no, I ain't forget about Jesus. Jesus is a cold name to my messenger. I ain't forgot about Jesus. He's a cold name to my messenger. I'm focusing on, on, on thought. I'm focusing on the almighty God who's going to deliver me from this condition that some people done put me in. You ain't even got to say, you white man put me in. You're going to say some people done put me in. You know, don't be bash on people because people done bash on you. Because you're going to be the ones that understand the language, how to get these people to want to borrow from you. See, the U.S. Central man ain't nobody else want to borrow from you. I'm going to tell you something. Listen, I'm going to talk to my brothers and my sisters. I'm going to tell you something. Everybody come to this country and use you. Everybody. Chinese don't use you. Some of the other Asians don't use you. You go to the different restaurants, and especially like me in St. John and Town Center, and I like that place. But some of the restaurants are none of them around by you. Okay? And other places and cities are none of them by you. Everybody runs stuff with you. We go and we spend our money, we get our paycheck, we go in there and we go and sit down with our kids. Some of the restaurants that provide it, the kids have their little party and stuff, and the mom brings the big cake and stuff, and other family members come. Some restaurants are different. Some restaurants, Italian restaurants, etc. They come there. But see, what's happening is that they're building these things for themselves. All the stores, all the uh, large car dealerships, not some new stuff, a lot of large. You got one or two brothers almost out there. But they kind of like low key. But you got all this stuff, all this industry and stuff there. And, and we ain't been able to be the bankers. We ain't been able to be the ones that live. Now God done fix it. God done fix it so we be the lenders. And not the borrowers. See, when we go to the bank, we go to the bank, when we're going to make something happen, we got to borrow it. We're going to become lenders. Malachi, I want you to see the relationship between this and Deuteronomy and this and, and Malachi 3.10. Bring ye all the tithes unto the storehouse. Now, why is they saying this? Now? Because our attitude on paying tithes is going to understand it like an alchemist. How we got it there? How alchemists understand it. You're going to understand that paying your tithes is the universal principle. I use the term, it's better to give than to receive. Paying your tithes to the messenger is, a, is going to make these things happen because God is not going to let you pay the tithes to the old regime. You're going to pay it to the Moses-type regime now. And when you pay, that, pay your tithes, that's when these blessings and that's when this change is going to come about. Things going to be open up to you. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. I, have to, I, 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 I want you to go study this, okay? Anybody who know about banking know 
that if you put a thousand dollars, the bank have a thousand dollars in there, they could they could lend up to what ninety thousand, something like that, a thousand, ninety thousand, or nine thousand, something like that. Way more than what they put in. So the bank ain't don't need but this much, but they can lend all this other money. Okay. So if you pay your tithes and offering and you got banks, that means your lending capability is far beyond the amount that you have in that bank. Could you imagine how that would be if you had that in the black community and the black community could take that lending amount and build themselves and still have that other part in their banks? Whoa, do you know that? That's what the bank's doing today. You're gonna engulf that power. You're gonna engulf that ability through following the law of God to deal with economics. And God wants you to know that. He's gonna take that and turn it around. Let me show you something. Now you got that money in the banks. Now the government owes you reparation. So what you do? You go get you some black lawyers, some Jewish lawyers, and you put your team together, and you get you some people to write legislation, and you go get your money. See, you got money to go get money then. See, but most of our leaders ain't saying that. They don't know that all that money you're going to get could build their church bigger than they could ever imagine if they would tie their, their ideology in the ideology of the messenger that God is sending this day and time. But they don't want to see the messenger. They don't want to see a black messiah. In the U.S. century, they told them, the Buddha and Negro, to stay away from that thought of a black messiah. Stay away from that thought of nationalism. And the NAACP, right down with it, and the SCLC and all the rest of them, right down with it. Because they ain't trying to build no industry that is true wealth for you. All they chasing is BS stuff. Come on. Let's wake up, brothers and sisters. God is talking to us. He's trying to liberate us. See, it's, it's, it's more than knowing that you're going to get great substance. You need to know how you're going to get the great substance. God ain't going to just give you stuff for you to lose the time you get it. He's going to organize it. He's going to have banks in that thing for you, for you to put your funds in, and you go borrow from your own money. And you're going to do what you're going to do, and you have bankers following the laws of God, following the will of God to direct you right and tell you how to invest your money and what you need to put your money in and in it you get your right percentage back where you can live off what God done bless you with. Come on, people. This is exciting time for us, but we got to see it. I told you I'm going to try to holler and scream on this one, so I'm going to try to keep it low key. Now look at this. You see this? Now, now watch Malachi. Very plain now as I read this. Bring ye all the tithes unto the storehouse. Now before you see this, Malachi 3.10, go back to Malachi 3.1. Please read Malachi 3.1 and you can understand why I say what I say about the messenger. You can't receive this until the messenger come. Who is Israel? Who is Lewis? I know you may not want to hear it, but I've got to tell it like it is. You've got to see this thing. Now I say, bring me all the tithes into the storehouse. You and God, all the tithes into the storehouse. He said storehouses? No. He said the storehouse. Why? Because he's giving you a messenger that's going to have the storehouse available for you to bring your tithes and offering. So this change. This change that God want to put in you, manifest in you, this miraculous change could come about. God is going to do a miracle now, a miraculous thing. And you need to see this. That there may be meat. Now understand this word meat. This ain't about meat, eating meat, meat, meat. This is the stuff that you bring into your life. So you can bring these things that you bring into your life. That meat in my house. And prove me now, there will Prove me now. God trying to tell you, hey, look, this is something that's going to really go on. I think this is going to go down now. Prove me. This is God telling you, prove me. I'm going to show you something. See, this ain't nothing new. See, this ain't happened before. This is something new, and you got to see this. Prove me now, therefore, said the Lord of hosts. Now, notice what this man did. 
he tried to, he took a word, a letter out of word to throw you off. Now all this excitement that God done gave you, now what you say? Now what do he say? And if you literally read it, your spirit is going to be floating to a knot in it. Listen to this. If I will take the K out, the one that he showed me to put, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, they say not, N-O-T. And they left it like that. They took the other left off there so you wouldn't know the truth because they wanted to hide that far from you. I will not open you the windows of heaven. I will not open it. God, you telling me you're going to bless me now. You will not open the windows of heaven and pull you out a blessing. See, that's why you need a messenger. Because that knot is K-N-O-T. It's like a corkscrew. You plug it up. It's a knot. You plug it up. You fit in that knot. It's like wood. Wood got a, some wood got a knot in it. And they use that to put the corks through, and sometimes they use that. Some of them want it a certain way, but you can easily knock that out and put it there. And uh, you can let stuff in and out. You got a crawl or something made that contain water. You can move it, and it can flow all you want, and then you plug it back up. See, because some of your problems may not be economics that you need from help. Some of them may be, I need my family together. I need a husband. I need a wife. I need my children to act right. All the blessings is in there. They're under the five laws. See, the five laws cover your life from the cradle to the grave. Then you got to understand that. Now, in that, you're going to see God bless them. He said, I will not, K-E-N-O-T, open you the windows of heaven. Not mean I'm going to fix it where you could get it when you want it. I will not open. I'm going to knot open. I'm going to put this knot. I'm going to put this thing in here so when you need it and you want it, it come to you. That's all the same. But they didn't have it like that because you didn't have an interpreter to tell you. I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you shall not be, that means there shall not be room enough to receive it. See, God want to bless you. God wants you to have the abundance of life. We're moving into the age of Aquarius. God wants you to live in longevity. People that I heard old, some old guys are showing people to live old, some old, some of the old people, some of them was 116, some of them was a little 118 and stuff like that. And, and, and they around 120. See, people in this, in the time of, uh, of uh, in the time of uh, Pisces supposed to live 120. You got to see the possession of the equinox. It goes like this, it, it goes like that. We, from Moses' time, from me, from Noah's time, after Noah's time, you had God say they'll live 120 years. Then you had some say they'll live 70, 80 years. Then they moved back to 120 years. And some people living as high as up to almost 120 years today. You see what I'm saying? But this part here, it's like the part down there coming from Noah time, the part we're moving in time, into, is the air sign. And like Noah, them live 900 to almost 1,000 years. You're going to live 900 to almost 1,000 years. And you got to see these things. And they're going to increase as the time goes. And you need to see this. That's why when you know what he said to Abraham, that will go to thy father at a good old age, you know that that is the end of the age, the dark age, which is the age in, in, in Pisces, the end of Pisces closed that age. And see, you know that. So all this stuff, alchemy, you need to understand. Because that's how you understand the Bible. You got to understand alchemy. It includes all the signs together. See, this is part of the arts. This is part of, of the teaching of Kenneth. This is part of where God taught the people. That's why he's son. Abraham into Egypt. That's why he said, I call my son out of Egypt. See, we got to start thinking about what God is saying. Now, when we see that, we see how God is going to bless us. Uh, uh, Randy, I'm going to give them some info over here so they can see this part. It says, it tells you, drop the European God that is about cursing you, okay? 
See, they said he said that, and they said he said that because they see that as their God. That ain't your God talking that. That's the devil trying to tell you that through man about all them curses and all that nonsense. And they use it in Moses, Moses, for you to, to think that God is trying to do all that. God ain't about cursing man. He never was about cursing man, and we got to see this. He ain't about cursing man. He's about blessing man. He's about teaching man of his shortcomings so he could improve himself. And we got to see this. Uh, a God made of stone, wood, and mortal. And you'll see in, in Deuteronomy 28, 64 through 64, and you see it in, in Deuteronomy 29, 17. God tell you, you got to get away from that. See this God that they show you, it's a raffle, and later on they show you a picture of their version of Jesus. That ain't God. That ain't got nothing to do with God. That's got to do with some his, his version of, of trying to manipulate things to make you believe in something like that. That ain't got nothing to do with that. And we got to see this. There have never been 12 tribes of Israel. Now, whoa! I'm going to say that again. There have never been 12 tribes of Israel. I don't care how much you read it in there. It's of the future. The 12 tribes of Israel cannot come about until Israel comes, and Israel have not came because the story of Jacob and Israel is about the future. So when you begin to see that, who did Israel see? Who did Jacob see? Jacob seen thought. Read one of the study of my earlier videos. He seen thought because Jacob asked him, who do I say? I mean, who, who, who are you? And he told him, I am thought. Thought I am. Go back and read it. When Jacob's supposed to be wrestling with the angel of the Lord. And then Jacob said, after he came to Israel, Jacob said, I have seen God face to face. Now we know that he did not see Almighty God face to face. So what God did he see? He seen thought face to face. Because what do it say when Jacob asks about the place? That he was. Panera. Showing you the Panera gland. And then it tells you about the rose, the sun rose over his head. And before that, it tells them about the the at the thigh. The thigh from the thigh up. That's showing you the uh, uh the kundalini. So he's seen him through the third eye, the kundalini. But see, they're not going to break that down and tell you that because they're not dealing with the science that go with this Bible. Numerology that go with this Bible. Sacred geometry that go with this Bible. Uh, the uh, golden ratio that go with this Bible. The counting of the stars that go with this Bible. And a lot of other things. And we got to see this. Come on now, children of Israel. You are the children of Israel. The children of Israel is on the planet right now. And you got to know that. Because you the one is about to get blessed with blessings that you're going to surpass the others. Because it takes you. You are the ones that are going to change this world. You are the one going to lead them into the age of Aquarius. You are the ones that are going to start living longevity. This is what God is saying to you now. You are the one, as above, so below. It's a scientific fact that the universe is setting itself in line to work with your kundalini, to work with your DNA, to give you longevity. This is no joke. This is real. This is real. And the devil trying all he can to put stuff in your air, put stuff in your water, put stuff in your food to keep you from getting there. The devil worked through man and these devilish ass mean behind people's ears not trying to do the right thing. And you got to see this. They want you to not to follow the laws of God. And they could get you not to follow the laws of God. Then yeah, they could get you into the curses that's written in the book. That he done put there and say, God, you're going to do this and do that. He done all this stuff to you. He put you on the boat. He the one brought you over here. He the one made sure nobody delivered you. Come on, people. Come on. 
Look at the height. Look at what's going on. Start thinking, thinking. Use thought as your guide. Use thought. See, he's already there in you waiting for you to wake up to him. Thought is connecting you. One mind. Thought. The mind, the one mind that radiates toward the most high God. Thought. Come on, people. That's what it's all about. That's what the Egyptian was trying to tell you. You need to learn and keep thought in your life. Thought is one that leads you to the right path. Not idle every thinking. Thought. Thought. And we got to see this. The observance to observe. Now, the children of Israel is the people born in our day. Israel is the code name for the messenger. Other areas he called Shiloh. In Genesis, in Isaiah, he called Barak. In Daniel, he called Michael. In the New Testament, he called Jesus. And in many other, and many other names in and out of the Bible. Some call them Horus. Some call them Ultimus. We got to see this. Now, you need to donate, donate and download to give, what that, life? Give life. Huh? Give what now? Le Fi. Okay. I have a problem with saying this on word. Give Le Fi on the mobile app, the Cross Rock Incorporated, 7536 Jane Lane, North Jacksonville, Florida, 32210. You got to follow the instruction to create an account to donate. And we want to leave that. We want you to see this so you can be able to read it and go on your phone or your internet and be able to make a donation to this organization. It's already signed up. So all you got to do is follow the instructions and go and donate to this organization. And we it will be greatly appreciated. So I hope you enjoy this and we have many more to present to you. But please study this over and over so you can see that God is not cursing you. Man is trying to curse you now.